subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. There are more field trials scheduled this month for genetically modified or GM mosquitoes. The biotechnology company Oxitec plans to release its genetically modified mosquitoes in the Florida Keys Islands this month as a part of a trial to curb mosquito-borne diseases in the region. The mosquitoes will be all male, only the females bite, of course, and these males will carry a protein that will kill all female offspring that they will go on to produce in the future. The objective of this trial is to reduce the population over time of the Aedes aegypti mosquito in the area which spreads illnesses like dengue, zika fever, chikungunya and yellow fever. In this video, we'll take a look at the tech behind GM mosquitoes, what they are programmed to do, how they work, how this whole trial and experiment is executed, what other field trials have shown and what experts really think of eliminating species of mosquitoes altogether. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. To understand why we've gone to the extent of genetically engineering mosquitoes, let's look at a bit of the history between humans and the pesky mosquito. Mosquito-borne diseases or mosquito-borne illnesses are diseases caused by viruses or bacteria or fungi or parasites that are transmitted by mosquitoes. Nearly 700 million people get a mosquito-borne disease every year and over 1 million people die globally annually from a disease that was caused by a mosquito. Of course, these diseases include malaria, dengue, chikungunya, yellow fever, various kinds of encephalitis, Zika fever and so on. It is thought that over the course of human history, 52 billion people have died at the hands of mosquitoes, according to author and historian Timothy Weingard, who wrote a book about the mosquito called A Human History of Our Deadliest Predator. In his book, he explores the subject of how mosquitoes have shaped human history over the ages, and he points out to many instances where he thinks they've done so. For example, Due to non-stop malaria in Africa, many African populations naturally developed a resistance to the disease by way of the sickle cell gene, which leads to sickle cell anemia. There are also well-regarded theories that state that the equatorial belt in the world did not develop as quickly and as richly over history as more tropical and temperate regions did due to the prevalence of malaria. Weingard even goes as far as to suggest that since mosquito-borne diseases are ancestral to Africa, many groups of people acquired immunity to yellow fever and malaria. And thus, when the Americas were colonized by the Europeans in the 1600s, there was no resistance to mosquitoes because Europeans took these diseases to the Americas when they colonized those lands. So Weingard says that when indigenous populations of Americans and European laborers kept dying constantly because of mosquitoes and mosquito-borne diseases, but African people did not, it created an environment where it was profitable to exploit African people and their labor and thus this led to the slave trade as well. A link to an interview of Weingard with the Smithsonian Magazine will be linked below for more such quotes. We also have ample instances of historical records and forensics of malarial infection. We know that King Tutankhamun or King Tut, the boy king, died at 19 and he had had multiple malarial infections. Egypt, in fact, was a hotbed for malarial infections and we've used DNA testing to confirm malaria dating back to the year 1800 BCE in the Egyptian Empire. Most ancient empires were in fact familiar with malaria, including Greeks and Romans and the Indians and Chinese. So mosquitoes have been a part of human existence since forever and they have been continuously killing us by transmitting deadly diseases to us. Most of these mosquito-borne diseases, if not all, do not have a treatment. 
We've developed drugs, of course, and everyone knows quinine and hydroxychloroquine at this point, but efficacy of these drugs is extremely limited and keeps dwindling because mosquitoes keep evolving rapidly. So the best course of action is prevention of a mosquito-borne disease. There are two or three notable mosquito species of the around 3,000 or so that we are familiar with because they cause the most bite and diseases among humans. Only a handful of mosquito species bite. We all know that malaria is caused by the female Anopheles mosquito. Only the females of biting species bite. Males just feed on nectar, but females need blood to make proteins that are needed for them to lay their eggs. Then there's the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which spreads innumerable diseases like yellow fever, Zika, chikungunya, and dengue that we saw earlier. Of course, there's also the Culex, which transmits diseases like Japanese encephalitis. And there are many other families and genera and species of mosquitoes. Adult females lay eggs in stagnant water, either close to the edge of the water or within or underneath leaves of aquatic plants. Mosquitoes have four stages in their life cycle, the egg, larva, pupa and imigo or adult. Each stage lasts about a week or two and the first three stages are primarily aquatic. Eggs hatch to become larvae which then become pupae. Then adult mosquitoes emerge from the pupae when they float to the surface. Most mosquitoes take about 40 days to reach the adult stage and they mate immediately after, usually. Adult males typically live for about a week or so, while adult females live only for about two to three weeks. All this drama in such a short lifespan. Both sexes feed on nectar and plant juices, but females suck blood from mammals or birds or even reptiles. All species have preferred hosts that they suck blood from. Among humans, mosquitoes tend to prefer those with the blood group O, or those who have a warmer body temperature or those who breathe heavily and pregnant women. You can also be genetically more attractive to mosquitoes. The insects are typically drawn to chemical smells that come from our body and exhaled breath and they can sense carbon dioxide and octanol which is also produced as a part of bio or body odor. Because mosquitoes evolve rapidly, in fact one species of the Anopheles mosquito is actually undergoing speciation right now to become two species, the methods to control their bites have to respond to changes in their base of behavior and evolution. They become very quickly resistant to insecticide and pesticide as the Aedes aegypti have done in the Florida area and then it becomes really hard to prevent diseases that they spread. After centuries of trying things, including evidence-based plant products, we are now desperately experimenting with GM mosquitoes by genetically altering them as a last-ditch large-scale resort. There are typically two approaches to genetically modifying mosquitoes that are being experimented on. One is to genetically modify both males and females so that they become resistant to diseases. This reduces their ability to transmit these diseases to other species, thus protecting us. The other method is to modify the reproductive ability of the males so they cannot produce offspring or produce only sterile offspring. The second method aims to lower the population of mosquitoes with the ultimate objective of eliminating a group of mosquitoes from a region. Since the genetic modification passes down from a parent to the offspring, it's called transgenic. This is the technology that Oxitec is attempting to test out. The first generation mosquitoes will be called OX513A. Oxitec genetically engineers mosquitoes in their UK labs to give them a self-limiting gene which will make female mosquitoes dependent on a specific antibiotic without which they will die. Eggs hatched from all of these mosquitoes will then be shipped to Florida Keys where they will be soaked in water which of course mosquitoes need to hatch. When females hatch, they will not have access to that antibiotic and they will all die. But the hatched males will survive and carry this gene to go and then subsequently mate with females in the wild and thus the process is repeated. 
This is ideally expected to reduce the local female mosquito population. Oxitec plans to release about 715 million male mosquitoes to breed with females in the wild over a period of two years. The company has already tried this approach out in field trials in Brazil, Cayman Islands and Malaysia and the results were quite promising, showing a reduction of up to 95% in mosquito populations and a drop of over 90% in dengue cases. There are of course many critics and skeptics of the methods who've raised their voices against Oxitex trials. While the plants have drawn concern from environmental groups, the company insists that it sees no risk from the experiments and stated that they have released over a billion genetically modified mosquitoes in previous trials with no adverse effects. The company as well as the US regulatory authority EPA has come under fire for not being transparent about the review process, which again Oxitec has rebutted. Some experts have cited the lack of long-term data on a reduction of disease, while others point to unproven effects of antibiotics in the environment, both of which have once again been rebutted by scientists and independent risk assessments as of yet. There have been also concerns about the experiment not turning out the way it's supposed to, such as when Oxitex Brazil trials saw some seemingly sterile mosquitoes surviving into adulthood and reproducing, and the effects of their survival on other species unknown. While many ecologists have concluded that the loss of a mosquito species is not likely to have any long-term consequences on the ecosystem in the region, as mosquitoes are not generally considered to be a keystone species that others depend on primarily, other experts have still pointed out that it is unwise to draw such a conclusion without enough data. Lastly, the WHO also supports genetically modified mosquitoes as a tool to fight mosquito-borne diseases that have killed millions, stating that more than 80% of the global population lives in areas that are at risk of at least one major vector-borne disease and that such diseases exact an immense toll on economies and can both impede rural and urban development. But WHO also cautioned that the use of such GM mosquito technology raises questions about ethics, safety, governance, affordability and cost-effectiveness, all of which should be addressed.